I share so many recipes over here every single week. Are you dying to know which ones are our favorites? Today you're going to find out. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. We're going to do this countdown style, so I'll start with number five. We'll end with number one, but before we get started, if this is your first time here, I would love if you would stick around, hit that subscribe button. I do new recipes all the time, so we're always sharing winter dinners with you. We never share anything with you that we don't enjoy, but today you're going to find out the best of the best. Also, just a little tip, don't leave before the end because there's something very exciting at the end of the video. Starting with number five, it may be the easiest of all of them. It's pretty close, but it's basically the knockoff version of KFC bowls. It's mashed potato and crispy chicken casserole. This is just a mashed potato casserole with some crispy chicken on top. It just sounds really yummy. I can't believe I've never had this at KFC, but we're gonna make it here at home. I am going the easy route. I'm using frozen chicken breasts that are already cooked, obviously, or chicken tenders. Um, so these are just like crispy chicken tenders. I just used the whole bag. I think it calls for eight, but there were 10 in my bag. Some corn. I'm gonna make homemade mashed potatoes in the Instant Pot, but you could definitely just buy pre-made mashed potatoes if you wanted to, just to make this even easier. It calls for cheddar cheese. I had some Monterey Jack left over as well as some cheddar cheese, so I'm just doing a mixture and then we will make this brown gravy to go on top. Very, very simple. Okay, so I have my potatoes here in this little steamer bowl, basically, that goes in here. We need five to six cups of mashed potatoes. I don't know if I got it right. We shall see. <laughs> but I'm gonna cook these on high pressure for about 10 minutes. So while I wait on that to come up to pressure, I am going to, these have been sitting out for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna try and slice these some, not a whole lot. They're still pretty frozen, but we're gonna give it a, a, a try. And then after that, I will go ahead and preheat my oven. This is not too bad at all. My mise-en knife is doing quite nicely, just cutting right through these. It's just gonna make them a little bit easier to serve if they're in smaller pieces like this. So I'm gonna continue on. I am preheating the oven to 400. Okay, so this only has a minute left. What I'll do is just drain off any excess water that's on there. And then I'll just be adding heavy whipping cream, a little bit of butter, and some anti no nos And then I always use my hand mixer just to make sure that they're super smooth. Okay, so I've put them in this nine by 13 dish and I'm just kind of spreading it out. I think it was the perfect amount of potatoes. Finding a few lumps in there, which makes me sad, but that's okay. I've got some frozen corn here that's been sitting out for quite a while now. We're just gonna sprinkle that on top. You need about a cup. Mine, my uh, bag of corn didn't quite have a cup left. Next, we're gonna top it with our cheese. Right on cue, ma'am, yeah. She said, as soon as she heard me say cheese, she said, wow. Don't worry, we'll give her some. Says you just need a cup of cheese. I probably have a little more. Gracie Lou, give me just a second, baby. Thank you, please. Um, I probably have a little bit more, but we really love cheese in this house, don't we? Do you love cheese? And lastly, we're just going to place our chicken on top and you can slice it however you want. Um, and you don't have to slice it if you don't want to, but it just makes it a lot easier to serve, I feel like. So I'm gonna place all of this all over the top. Okay, so this is going in a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Now, if you have fresh chicken or already made chicken, just like refrigerated chicken, you'll only need to do it for 15 minutes. But because mine is frozen, we're gonna do it for 20 minutes. It is going in uncovered. Okay, while that is in the oven, we're just gonna go ahead and make this according to package directions and we'll just pour brown gravy over the top of each serving. Fix your hair. <laughs> All right, KFC bowl. That's right. Oh man, look at that. I mean, this is comfort food right here. Potatoes and corn on the cob. It's not on the cob, but. Not on the cob. Right. Corn off the cob. <laughs> <laughs> 
some corn. How about that? There you go. Man, and then the gravy on the top. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna eat this so fast. <laughs> Well, there's plenty more in there. That is delicious. Oh man, mashed potatoes. Oh yeah. The chicken is outstanding. It's. It's. I mean, it's just frozen chicken that I found at the grocery that store. Is outstanding. Wow. Okay. Yeah, really good. Love that. The corn with the mashed potatoes. The, yeah. the sweetness of the corn. That gravy. Man. So I was really. I thought maybe I should just do homemade mm. chicken tenders, but. It's okay to do it this way. Oh, Cole says, mm-hmm. All right, well, I'm excited. I'm gonna dig in. Wow. Yay. Yes. I love how easy this was too. This is delicious. Mm. So Cole had a good point. He said, mom, I don't think you need to make homemade chicken tenders because they kind of it kind of gets lost because it's all mixed in together. It gets lost in here. So, I mean, the chicken is great, but you don't have to make, you know, this great homemade chicken to go with this because it's all in this bowl together. Comfort food. Yeah. I love this. Yeah, it's really good. Really good. Love the ingredients okay. in here. All just goes really well together. Yay. All right, another winter dinner. Mm -hmm. Number four is our second chicken recipe. These are the only two chicken recipes that made the top five, but this one was so delicious. We all enjoyed it. It is garlic butter chicken bites. This is a really simple recipe. You just need a couple of chicken breasts, maybe two, three, and you're gonna chop them up into smaller bite-sized pieces. I've got this large nonstick skillet heating to about medium-high heat. I'm gonna let that heat up and we're gonna prep our chicken. First, we're gonna add some salt and pepper. Next, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of all-purpose flour over the top. You'll probably need about two tablespoons, maybe a little less. We're gonna add some Italian seasoning, a teaspoon or two. And now we're just gonna toss this all together. You wanna get it pretty well coated. You don't want any of the flour or anything left here on the cutting board. So let's just toss this together and then we'll move over to the stove. Okay, our skillet is good and hot. I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon of olive oil. I'm also gonna add in a tablespoon of butter. Okay, to our skillet, we're gonna add in our chicken pieces. Now you don't wanna crowd them together, you want them to kind of space out a little bit so that they don't steam. You want these to brown. Okay, we're gonna let these brown on one side for about three minutes and then we'll go in and flip them. Now that I've flipped them, we're gonna let them cook for another couple of minutes, two to three minutes, and then we'll add in our the rest of our butter and our garlic. So I'm adding in about four teaspoons of minced garlic and I'm also adding in three to four tablespoons of butter and then lastly, I'm gonna add in some fresh chopped parsley. I've turned down my heat as well to about medium low. I'm just going to continue to toss this in the garlic butter for just another minute and then we're done. Yummy. He wasn't here for the cooking of this, so he really doesn't even know mm. what's in it. Wow. <laughs> you got lemon or something on it for sure. Uh, I've got parsley. No lemon. I don't have lemon on it for real. It doesn't have lemon on it. Man. The garlic flavor on that. There's a lot of garlic. I guess the parsley is what's giving that citrus flavor. I don't Maybe know. so. I don't know. Garlic. You're talking about some heavy hidden right there. I put a lot in there. And then some herbs in there. Is it what? too much? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love it. It's fantastic. Yeah, I've got some. The, what's, the, what's all the herbs Italian and spice? seasoning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. I love the a sear on there too. Mm -hmm. let, them, let them get Brown caramelized a bit. there. Yeah. Mm. And then I made That's your good. favorite rice. Mm -hmm. So my mom makes this rice every year at Thanksgiving and Christmas. And it's like Stephen's favorite mm. part of the holidays, mm -hmm. I think. At least of the holiday food. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Well, I'm glad you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I'm digging in. You did good. So I almost forgot to come back on here and tell y'all what I thought, obviously. I loved it too. These guys finished really quickly. It was so good. I really do think that the breading on the outside of the chicken really does help adhere all of that flavor to it, but this was delicious. Coming in at number three is a crock pot meal. I love using my crock pot. This one was so good, so tender. My mouth is watering. This is crock pot beef stroganoff. It's gonna start out on the stove. We're gonna sear the meat and saute some of the vegetables, but then everything else is just gonna go in the slow cooker. It's pretty easy and I have a feeling it's gonna be very tasty. I've got about two pounds of stew meat here, but some of the pieces are pretty large. We want to cut them down to be about one inch each. Okay, I chopped up our meat and now we are going to get this really large skillet heated to about medium high heat. And we're gonna add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. While we wait on this to get pretty hot, we are going to season our meat. I'm going to sprinkle it with a little bit of garlic salt and some pepper. And then we're also going to toss it in about a quarter cup of flour. Once your skillet gets hot enough, you are gonna sear the meat in batches. You're only gonna sear it for about 45 seconds per side. You're not trying to cook it, we're just searing it. So you just wanna brown it and flip it and then as soon as it's browned on all sides go ahead and remove it to a plate and then just continue working until you are done now that we're done with the meat i'm going to take this same pan and we are going to put in a tablespoon of butter and let that melt down and we're also going to add in about a half a cup of white wine and we're going to deglaze the pan and then i'm going to throw in my mushrooms and my onions if you don't want to use white wine you don't have to you can just use chicken broth I'm just letting all of this melt down and then we're gonna throw in those mushrooms and onions. Okay, I just added my onions and now we're gonna add my sliced baby bellas. I'm only using half the amount of mushrooms it tells you in the recipe just because Cole is not a huge fan of mushrooms and I'm, I'm gonna leave them as large as possible so he can just pick them out. We're just gonna let this saute for four or five minutes this has been cooking for about four minutes. For this last minute, we're gonna add in about four cloves of garlic minced. And just let that cook, and then we'll be ready to move over to the crock pot. So to our crock pot, I did go ahead and line it just so it's easier for cleanup. I'm gonna add four cups of beef broth, which is this entire container. One teaspoon of better than bouillon. I'm using the roast beef flavor. Two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. Two tablespoons of the dub sauce. Wish to sheer. And two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. We're just gonna mix that around really good. Now we're gonna add in all of our beef and any juices that are on this plate. and our onions, garlic, and mushrooms, along with any sauce that's left over. Let's give that a good stir. And then this is gonna cook on high for four to five hours. Or if you're doing it earlier in the day, you could do it on low for eight to nine hours. Okay, it's time to finish up our stroganoff. Let's make a cornstarch slurry. I'm going to get a fourth a cup of cornstarch and a fourth a cup of water and mix that together here. It's hard to do this one-handed. <laughs> it takes just a little bit to get the clumps to go away. You just gotta work with it. Before we add this in, I'm gonna go ahead and start my egg noodles. First thing we're gonna do is pour in our cornstarch slurry. This is just gonna help thicken it up. Stir that around. We're gonna flip this over to warm. While we let this sit, we're gonna mix one and a half cups of sour cream with a couple of ladleful of the liquid that's in there with our beef stroganoff. Dude behind the camera has mentioned it twice that he would love for me to add just a little bit of this. So we're gonna add it right here into this. A little crushed red action. Not a lot. Nah, just a sprig. <laughs> it's just a smidgen. Okay, you add more in there. Okay, I that's it. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, that's starting to thicken up. And now we're just gonna add in our sour cream mixture. Now, the recipe does say it's optional. You can add in a can of cream of mushroom soup if you want to right here. We're not going to, but that will thicken it up even more. Okay, y'all, let's eat. down some homemade. All right, well this is the recipe you picked out, so if you don't like it, it's your fault. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe a little a little pat on my back too, you know, since yeah. I cooked it. Oh, yep, yeah. uh oh, thanks, <laughs> thanks. Wow. Mmm. How's the meat? Is it tender? Okay. Buttery just melts in your mouth. It's funny that you say butter because I just remembered something. At the very end, it calls for two tablespoons of butter to mix into it and I did not do that. But it's okay? Mm-hmm. Would that just like take it over the top maybe? It's already over the top yeah. from your facial expression. I mean, it would smooth it out some, but it it's not going to really add so much. Okay. I mean, totally forgot. Too. I just got sidetracked and forgot to do but that. But this is tremendous. Yay. The sauce is crazy good. Okay. I mean, wow. <laughs> well, I'm excited to give it a try. That's man. really good. Usually, like when you eat the beef stroganoff, it's too, uh, it's almost pasty. Okay. But I like how the sauce is, I don't know, I don't want to call it soupy, but it's just more. There's more sauce here to enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Mmm. Okay. Well, I'm excited to dig in. We're also having some Brussels sprouts with this really cool uh, dipping sauce. That is gonna be in a video coming up very soon, so don't miss that, but I'm gonna dig in. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. I just wanna show you how tender this meat is. It just falls apart, like literally, when you bite into it, it just falls apart. It is amazing. Yep. So tender. This sauce is really good. I can't imagine it being any better, but do what the recipe says and add a couple of tablespoons of butter at the very end before you serve it. Yeah. Totally forgot to do, to do that. But this is a 10 out of 10 recommend. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Our top two were really hard to figure out which one was number one, which was number two. But we're putting number two as our seafood bowl. This one was so delicious. Today we're making a seafood bowl or we call it a low country bowl. So we are just making this for a very small crowd. It's just me and Steven here today. So if you have a larger stew pot, I would use that if you're making it for a bigger crowd. I'm just gonna be using my Dutch oven. I'm gonna fill it up with some water and stick it on the stove to start heating that up. I didn't have fresh shrimp, I had frozen shrimp. So I went ahead and thawed that under some cold water. So that's ready for us. It is peeled, deveined, but the tails are still on. I've got about a pound of sausage here. So I'm just gonna chop this up. Okay, so that's all we need to do for that. Steven has already prepped our corn for us. This is fresh corn. He shucked it and did all that good stuff and cut it in half. I'm just going to chop up these gold potatoes a little bit and we're gonna quarter the onion. So we're just doing this with shrimp and sausage today, but you could definitely add clams or mussels, um, some lobster in there. You're just gonna add it in stages based on how long it's gonna cook. So obviously our corn and our potatoes are gonna go in earlier on and then towards the end is when we will throw in our sausage and our shrimp, because that only takes a couple of minutes. Okay, we need some garlic cloves, but these are just gonna go in for flavor. So I am gonna peel them, but we're not gonna chop them. They're gonna go in whole. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> we're gonna do the same thing with a lemon. We're not going to do much other than kind of quarter it. So I'll put three pieces into the water, and then I'm gonna save one piece for garnish at the end. We're gonna go ahead and add in our Old Bay seasoning. I'm gonna add a good bit in, probably about a quarter of a cup. And we're also going to go ahead and add in our lemons, our onion, and our 
garlic. Okay, our water is not quite up to boil yet, but that's okay, it's getting there. We're gonna add in our potatoes first. They're gonna need to boil the longest. They'll need to boil for like eight to 10 minutes. So let's add those in now. This recipe intimidate and used to intimidate me. It doesn't anymore. It's really fast and easy. This whole thing, once it comes up to a bowl, is gonna cook in about 10 minutes, a little less. So you can have dinner really quickly. Now that this has come up to a bowl, I have set my timer for nine minutes. We'll add in our corn next. That will go in at around the five or six minutes left mark. I'm gonna take about a half a stick of butter and melt this in the microwave. We've only got about three minutes left, so let's throw in our sausage and our shrimp. Okay, and we're just basically gonna cook this until the shrimp are done, which should be another couple of minutes. And then we're almost done. Our shrimp look like they are done and ready. So, we're gonna reserve about anywhere from a half a cup to a cup of this liquid. There we go. Now we're gonna drain the rest of this off. Now that we've drained it, we're just gonna add it back to our pot. We're gonna add just a little more Old Bay seasoning just because we want to, but it doesn't wanna come out. There we go, there we go. To our liquid that we reserved, we're gonna add in our butter and let's whisk that together. And now we're just gonna pour it over top. We've got some fresh chopped parsley and let's give this a big toss and then it's gonna be time to eat. Are you happy? Yes. Uh -huh. Look at this. Yeah, we have some extra oh, melted boy. butter with a little Old Bay in it. Buttery Old Bay seasoning on the shrimp here. Mm -hmm. Perfectly cooked. Mmm. Mmm. There's some of corn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going. Oh, he's we're just going. gonna roll the corn in it. Man, yeah. Perfection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll give you more thoughts in a minute. I don't want mine to get cold. I'll be back. This is summertime on a plate. And he keeps saying, you can eat it like a caveman. I brought mm -hmm. him a fork. He ain't touched it, I don't think, once. Then no fork. <laughs> I used a fork. But this is so good. I didn't mention earlier, you can always do this with crab legs, which we have done that before. Mm. We just didn't have any right now. But gosh, y'all, this is so good. Please make this. Mm. He's so happy. If you aren't familiar with Old Bay, it is not overpowering. So adding all of that seasoning in there, it, it's kind of, it looks like it's a lot and it might be really heavy, you know, just over overpowering. It's not. So just a heads up. And you can taste just a little bit of the lemon in there with it. It's perfect. Mm. Ma'am, you can't have it. Okay, it's time for number one. If you've been around for a while and you watch every single week, before I tell you what number one is, go down in the comments and let me know which one you think it is. Coming in at number one is the stromboli that I made. It's comedy and it's cooking, but it was so delicious. It should be very easy. You could always make your own pizza dough, but my friend Amber told me the other day that you can buy pizza dough ready to go in the deli section of your local grocery store. I didn't believe her. I don't know why I didn't believe her, but I was like, I've never seen that probably because I've never looked for it, but I went in today and there it was. So I have pizza dough ready. This is going to be a very quick and easy meal and I think we're gonna love it. Okay, we're gonna start out by preheating the oven to 375. Okay, the only prep work I need to do is just crack one egg and beat it. And then I also need to melt three tablespoons of butter. 
Okay, I just washed my countertop just to make sure it is good because we are gonna roll out the dough here on the countertop. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of flour all over our surface here. This is gonna end up on me and I'm wearing black. It's happening. I'm gonna be covered in it. I have aprons, I just rarely wear them. <laughs> okay, so I was talking to Amber earlier. She told me to go ahead and take it out of the fridge and open up the bag and just kinda let it sit on the countertop for a while. So I did, it's been sitting out for about an hour. I'm gonna get it out of here. Just getting it out of the bag is proving to be fun. This is gonna be interesting. There we go. I'm just here for your entertainment, folks. <laughs> Y'all know I'm not a baker. Here we are. Okay. It's not too sticky, actually. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Let me get my rolling pin. And it says that we want to try and get this to be about 12 inches by 14 inches. So we want a long rectangle. Let's see how this goes. It just wants to go back into... Yeah, this is gonna be interesting. What in the world? If this ain't comedy. I'm about to call Amber. How am I gonna make this 12 inches? Oh my gosh. We about to call Pizza Hut. Domino's. I'm serious right now. How do you make this? Go out. And stay out. This is comical. We need a rectangle right now. We have a triangle. I know my shapes, I do. But this pizza dough does not know its shape. Oven's ready. I'm still over here messing with the stupid dough. Why, why is it shaped like a bell? Okay, y'all, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> this is as good as it's gonna get. This is it's pretty good. I don't, I don't know what happened here. I can't fix it, won't go back. So, good luck and Godspeed. Now, moving on. I'm mixing about a tablespoon of minced garlic with a tablespoon of butter. And we're just gonna spread this all over our pizza dough. I thought this was just gonna be so quick and easy. Here I am 20 minutes later, still trying to figure out how to roll out the pizza dough. Now I'm gonna take my mozzarella cheese and just sprinkle about maybe a half a cup on right now. Not too much, Gracie is over here. She is very aware of what is going on. You want some cheese? Okay. There you go. Yeah. On top of our mozzarella, I'm gonna go in with some ham. Okay, we're leaving a little bit on this side, like it's kind of clear here. And you want to leave a little bit on the, around the edges as well, a little bit of space. You don't wanna close it all the way up. You can close it all the way up over here. This is the side we're gonna roll first. This is the seam side. Okay, on top of our ham, we're gonna go in with just a little more mozzarella cheese. Now I'm going in with salami. And finally, as far as the meat goes, our pepperoni. We're gonna top it with the remaining cheese. I think the recipe calls for a cup and a half of mozzarella. This is two cups. We'll probably just use it all just because. Gracie Lou, you want another piece of cheese? Now I've got my egg that I beat. I am just going to brush this on the exposed edges. So the two short sides and then the one long side that's gonna be our seam side. Now, we're gonna roll this up jelly roll style. Wish me luck. I'm gonna come over here to this side and start carefully rolling it pretty tightly. Okay, once you get it going initially, it's not too bad. Okay, that's not horrible. I'm pretty proud of myself. I mean, it started out a little rocky. We can all agree on that. But, ta-da. Okay, I am going to bring it over to my baking sheet. I did spray it with nonstick spray. We want the seam side down. So I'm just kind of pinching my edges together. This has worked out perfectly. It fits the exact size of my baking dish. I've got two remaining tablespoons of melted butter. To that, you're either gonna add some Italian seasoning and garlic powder or in my case, I'm just gonna use this Mr. Sticks Steakhouse seasoning because it's garlic and herb, so that's perfect. And then I'm also going to add some Parmesan cheese to that. 
Let's just mix that around. Let's brush this all over the top. This smells so good. Okay, before we put it into the oven, you do wanna cut slits in it with a serrated knife. I've got my mason knife here. Every two inches or so, this is going in a 375 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes. Ma'am, tell them you got cheese. Oh, there's evidence right there. See, I got cheese, guys. I did. It's been a good girl today, and I got lots of cheese. He's been jumping around. I wish I could sing. I'm gonna do a little bit of this. Marinara. Marinara. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. We have a coal siding with a nod. That means it's good. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Oh, man. Pizza night without the pizza. I guess it's Italian night. There you go. I mean, it's got pizza dough. Mm. I really hate that you missed me and they're trying to stretch out that pizza dough. You'll just have to watch it on the video. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Ma'am. Well, mm. I'm gonna dig in. We've got the Caesar salad here on the side. I will tell you, you wanna wait about five minutes before you cut into it. You let it, you take it out of the oven and then wait five minutes and then cut into it. But mm. we've got our Rayo's dipping sauce here. I've got a cat begging. Mm -hmm. mm, 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 okay, mm. I'm gonna dig in. Y'all, I'm very impressed. Cole said it was worth it, meaning the trouble that I had in there with the pizza dough. Yes, it was worth it. 100% it was worth it. Mm. This is delicious. It is so rich and flavorful. This would be great to serve at a party. Oh man, we are happy people. <laughs> okay, like I promised, I have a special surprise for those of you who stay to the end. Not only am I going to throw in like a compilation of bloopers here at the end, because I know that's always your favorite part, but I'm also doing a giveaway in this video. I recently hosted, hosted a Pampered Chef party. It was all online. I had a consultant who set everything up and a lot of you purchased from that party. Thank you very much. And because of that, I was able to get a lot of hostess rewards and I chose to get a whole group of things just for a giveaway to give back to you guys. I haven't even opened these up. They're still in the plastic, but these are, in case you can't tell, these are the measuring cups that I use all of the time. My favorite can opener that has like the no sharp edges. I love this thing. I use it daily. The infamous mix and chop. This thing is so great when you are cooking meat on the stove and you're needing to break it up. It will shred chicken for you. If you're making banana bread, it'll smash up your bananas. It's so good. My favorite stackable measuring spoons. These are so great. They all clip together. And lastly, but not least, is the classic batter bowl. Let me show you what it looks like. This is the small version of it. My large version is being used right now, but it's an eight cup batter bowl. It does come with a lid. It is so handy to have. It has a pour spout, so good. So how do you enter to win? It is so easy. First of all, leave me a comment and let me know which of the top five you think would be your family's favorite. Give this video a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed, subscribe to my channel. And lastly, share this video. You can tag me on Instagram by sharing it over there. You can share it on Facebook. There's a little share button right below this video. You can click on that and share it out with your friends and family. You could text a link to your friends and family. Just share it in some way with someone you think might enjoy it. This video is going live on my channel on Friday, May 20th. You have until Wednesday, May 25th, 2022. I will pick a winner first thing on Thursday morning. So you have until midnight on May 25th. For this giveaway, since I am shipping things, I do ask that it is within the 48 continental United States and that you're 18 or older. And if you are not in the continental United States, hopefully I will have another giveaway for y'all soon.
I'm just doing this as a thank you. I so appreciate you being here every single week. So enter really quickly, really easily. You have four things to do. I'll list it all again in the description box and maybe a pinned comment below. And now let's jump into the bloopers. I'll see y'all next time. Bye. And she said, that sounds like the key, the key. The key. Nope. Ma'am. Gracie Lou, I'm trying to record. Can you give me minutes? Give me minutes. Thank you. Thank you. And then you need about one and a half cups of cheese. I've got half. Thank you. The oven's ready. Okay, so the. Do you see who's sitting over here next to me? Because she knows I have the cheese. So if you're wondering about this corn, make sure you stay tuned in a very. Yeah. <laughs> very. I'm with you on that. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. It's gonna be in my head now. She was yawning. <clears throat> Again, hold on. Four eggs. And spew it all over me. Did you see that? It shot all over me. Lovely. That's where I share share with the blah blah. I sh share. I share share. I sh share. Luda. You wanna come gooey? She said she could do it better. You want to do it? See? You can do it better? I thought so. Come here. She just thinks I have something. But I don't. I will reserve this for her. You good? You want to get back down? No stinker. Okay. This was so good. It is good. Great job. <laughs>